four things, A, B, C, and D. And this is my interpretation of the rubric. So what I've done here is I've annotated them uh, with, a, with like, what's the most important thing? So if you only watched this video instead of the, I don't know, I'll probably make five or six more, because uh, I want to help you, like, if you haven't yet learned some things that you need to learn in order to perform well on this paper and you're nervous about it, I want to help you. I want to help you right now. So, A, uh, knowledge and understanding and interpretation. What do you know? What does it mean? And why does it matter? That's this word implication. is kind of like, why does it matter? So, when you read for this paper, you're going to read your extract you want to be reading looking for value. I'll talk about that more later. Um, but implications and subtleties, the literal meaning, and then what are the implications and subtleties? So if you can use the word implicit or imply in your examination, that's a good thing. You know, when you're working with something like this that's based on a rubric, it's helpful if you can make the job of the assessor easy by like keying into you know that thing that I'm supposed to do? I'm doing it. Um, and you do that when you use keywords like implicit or imply. Uh, we'll talk about that a lot later once I write my own paper uh, based on probably on feedback from you. I've got four different extracts in here. There'll be four different guiding questions and you can let me know. Let me know which one you think I should do and I'll probably do that one. B, analysis and evaluation. Here's a little tips for paper number one within this category. How does it work? Can you identify and describe specific authorial choices and evaluate their impact on meaning? Um, so for the evaluation piece, your little language helper to let the assessor who's grading your work know that you know what you're supposed to be doing and you're actually doing it as you're, you know, it's in your essay um, is a phrase effectively or most effective when you're looking at these authorial choices um, when you answer that guiding question, you want to answer you. You're, what you're doing is you're proving that the um, that the writer has done whatever the guiding question is asking you about effectively, or you or a step beyond that might be you are showing a more nuanced understanding of how they've done it, and you're um, noting strengths and limitations of the approach that the author took. So for these authorial choices, it's really all about like authorial choice and then meaning. You know, the AP, we get to make fun of AP. Yes, yes, we get to make fun of AP. Um, the AP mindset is kind of like, um, here's a bunch of literary techniques. I can identify them. So what? Who cares? You know, so whenever you notice an authorial choice or you're going to use that uh, little language, you know, like atmosphere, mood, tone, you're going to talk about things like diction and word choice and things like that. You always want to have like the following sentence have something to do with meaning. Um, so like the, the way the whole thing works is like the, a great verb to use is compels. The idea is like this work that was created by this author compels or brings to the reader or offers to the reader or invites the reader to See, feel, sympathize, consider, understand, and those authorial choices are always leading to like some like an experience, either emotional or otherwise, that the reader has in constructing meaning. Um, and so it's great. It's really actually great. Totally complicated. Totally great. I think so at least. Focus and organization. So focus and organization is your work carefully structured to make the reader's job as easy as possible. Can you meld your thinking with the authors? Because focus and organization also includes the idea that you're skillfully or craftily um, weaving the author's language into your examination of that language. So how many quotes are you going to have? Um, a lot. You know, your essay might end up being, I'm going to say like 600 to 750 words is your target for the size, and we'll talk about this more later. Um, your thesis, importantly, is like 75 to 100 words, you know, and in the examples that I've read that are very strong examples, there's not like that, you know, that sentence that you've all written, and we love them. We love to read them. As teachers, they're so cute. When you say like, throughout all of human history, humankind has struggled with identity. And we're always like, oh, tell me more. That's so nice. Tell me about this. 
Tell me about the struggle for identity that humans have experienced for thousands. You know, you know what I mean. It's a fluff sentence. You don't need that sentence for this paper. You don't need that sentence in general for IB writing. They want you to get right into what are you going to prove? What are you going to do? So your thesis statement should really be like quite a direct answer to the guiding question and maybe like two sentences that are put together, 75 to 100 words, uh, two sentences that are sequenced in such a way that like the points are in order that you're going to make them. Well, we'll talk about the thinking process that you do while you're reading um, a little bit later into this video, maybe in future videos. Uh, but basically, that's what your thesis statement should be. Focus and organization. Second point here is this is work where you're like, you're making the reader's job easy. So you might choose to organize your essay in such a way that you examine different pieces of the uh, of, of the extract you know so you might say initially the extract focuses on such and such and such a thing and then later you would say in contrast to this the next section focuses on this affects this choice affects the reader on a different level or this next section affects you know what, you know what i'm saying here so that you're like you're these these little transition words and phrases a lot of times they're at the beginning of a paragraph your work, a uh, 600 to 700 word essay, you could have a, do it very successfully with like a short introductory paragraph, a really long paragraph that makes one point, another really long paragraph that makes another point, and that might be it, and then a short concluding paragraph. Um, or might, you might have three points that you wanna make depending on what you're doing. Um, some teachers probably teach like, I don't know, like where you use little letters, you know, like, I don't even know what they are because I don't believe in this, those things. Um, you know, where you're like a paragraph about the syntax, a paragraph about the imagery, a paragraph about the conflict between the characters. You know, I don't think that that's very helpful for this because they really very clearly want you to answer the driving question, you know, answer the guiding question. That, that, is, that is what they want you to do. And so doing something else that's kind of like a formulaic approach where you're like, you know, where it's like, you predetermined that you were going to have an examination of the syntax. Well, the syntax might not be the most important authorial choice in like related to the guiding question for sure, but it might not be a key element in in the work itself. You know, so I'm I'm not I'm not going to offer you something like that. I'm going to talk about a thought process that you should go through in understanding the guiding question as broadly as possible, and then. Um, interpreting the extract looking for i call it energy you know you want to see where is the where's the energy and where's the power in the extract i'll talk about this a little bit later if you've seen my videos before i'm kind of just i'm kind of crazy about verbs i maybe have a verb problem i might be a little bit too crazy about verbs the verbs that you want to have in your back pocket because this is the work that you're really doing the work that you're really doing is you're constructing a bunch of sentences that do the work of analysis so you have to tell your reader you know, what does the extract do? At what points in the extract is, is, are certain things happening? Um, so these great verbs are like, and I'll have other verbs, lists of verbs later, and I'll talk about other things, but these are just ones I want to put on the cover. So like these, the things on the cover are the, um, I don't want to say they're the most important, but they're the ones that I was like thinking, like if you want to score high in a C, do this. If you want to score high in D, do this. If you want to score high in B, do this, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the verbs for your language are like, um, this phrase suggests. Uh, the passage foregrounds the conflict between. Um, the author, McCann, call him, McCann utilizes violent imagery to reveal the nature of the experience um, that the protagonist, blah, 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 blah. Um, this creates an important effect in the mind of the reader. You know, this, um, this passage evokes a strong sense of nostalgia for, or this represents a strong sense of nostalgia. Um, the author juxtaposes the violent imagery with the uh, peaceful countryside to, you know, you see all, all those sentences are always like, Something, something, too. So, for example, Smith's use of phrases like whatever and whatever, lines four and seven, invite the reader to some, some, some. This choice in diction also evokes a feeling of some, some, some. You know, 
this is how you want to use language as you're actively interpreting meaning using evidence, talking about the effect on the reader. What's next? More pages with more thinking? For sure. I've taken those same four and broken them down. And this is where I would love to hear from you if you have something you're concerned about in these areas. You know, so how confident do you feel interpreting meaning from four different text types? That's important, you know, because you don't know what's coming at you on this on this exam. This is one of my foundational approaches to literature. It's kind of like we're looking for value. We're looking for some some meaning that we can bring back into our lives that can help us in some way. That's what we're looking for. Um, so that's what you want to look for when you read that extract. Do you feel confident in doing that? You can look through these. I don't think I'm going to take the time to read all of them right now, but you can certainly pause the video and read them yourself. And if there's any one of these that you're more concerned about than others, leave a comment. Let me know. And then I can use that to shape future videos. What does this diagram mean? Well, it's, I guess I made it, so it must be important. So now I'm getting into like, okay, uh, the process that you're actually going to go through when you do your actual paper number one is a reading process and a writing process. And so I suggest that on that first reading of your extract, and I have one that you could read. You have one in front of you too. You know what it is. You could just turn the page unless you didn't take the step to print it out and you're just watching this as like it's a TV show. Don't watch it like it's a TV show. Watch it like it's a pretend, you know, you're playing along at home. Um, but you could read this right here. Without a guiding question would be a great way to do it. No guiding question. And, and you can still ask yourself these questions. Or you can still, like, think about it in terms of value, energy, emotion, what's good about it what's surprising about it, what's like strange or what gives you feelings of like, I'm not quite sure what's going on. That's a, like that's exactly what you want to pay attention to. You want to notice those things. What is distinctive about this particular passage? That's what you want to say to yourself when you read on that first reading. Um, usually, ID places the questions at the end. So that first reading, I would read it without the question. I would, I would recommend doing it that way. Then, on your second, then you read the guiding question. Read that guiding question after that and then reread it. And maybe now you're annotating. It's really up to you, like, how you like to annotate things. You don't want to over-annotate, but, you know, but you want to, like, you want to find out, like, what are those lines that are worth talking about? And you also do want to say to yourself, what are the authorial choices that I can name? Not that like the whole paper is about naming authorial choices, but you do want to incorporate those as much as you can um, into your thesis statement. I sure like coffee. You know, this mug is from Poland. It's a Polish mug. My family's from Poland. I'm not from Poland. I'm from Nebraska. Thesis statement. So... Here's a possible thesis statement framework. Take it for what it's worth. It is not like a definitely use this. Um, first of all, you wouldn't want to say the work. You would want to say like, you know, um, this poem by Tom Gunn effectively blank, blank, blank by, you know, and it really depends on what that guiding question is. So I'm going to talk about guiding questions a little bit. Um, here's something we know about guiding questions. The IB has released like four of them officially that I have been able to find or seen or like been given at different like IB teachers teaching jam sessions like where we just get together and we're like, yeah, let's do some teaching, learn about teachings. So like, here's one of them. What tensions are created by the descriptions in these paragraphs? Here's another one. How is imagery used in this poem to evoke the impact of love on a person's life? How is the relationship between the two characters established in this extract? To what effect does the narrator combine objective facts and subjective perception in this text? So you can see, depending on the question, this will look a lot differently. 
this will look a lot different. But, you know, if it's tension, the work effectively establishes tension by juxtaposing two powerful forces throughout the text. For example, I mean, that's just like one way. So, so one thing is, is that when you think about something like, well, here's tension right here. And this is, this is the list that I just came up with. It's not exhaustive, but like what we, what we do know, we have these four example questions to, to think about. And then we also have what the IB said is that the guiding question will focus on a formal or technical aspect of literature. Well, what are those? There's a lot, but I think that if you feel pretty confident that you understand all of these, how they work, like you could talk about them, you could like examine how an author could do them differently, then, then, you're, then you're okay, then you're, then you're like kind of ready. So this would be another place where you could say, uh, Mr. Lewandowski, blah, I don't know what narrative techniques are. What are you talking about narrative techniques? Um, because I think that like if you look at these questions, they're fairly broad. You know, like tension is a really broad concept. So like, you know, there's other things that are literary devices or techniques like anaphora. You know, like in what ways does the author use anaphora to – I don't think they're going to be that specific in a guiding question because – that's horrible. That would, you know, and they're not. They're not horrible. They're not going to do horrible things with these questions. I think they're going to be broad enough questions that you could interpret them quite broadly and you could like look into where's the energy in the text? Where's the value? Where's the emotion? What's good about it? What's interesting about it? What's strange about it? So, and then maybe say after reading the extract that like the author is able to achieve this you know, how, how does it do it? So, the, so answer the question. They I think they put out like some further guidance that's like, answer the question. Like we want you to answer the question. Um, so the author achieves this by, and here's something that you interpret in the text, you know, some way that the author goes about doing it. Here's another way that the author goes about doing it. And here's maybe another way that the author goes about doing it. Or maybe it's a relationship between this. Maybe the tension is that, you know, the author first establishes this, but then does this. Or maybe one of these is a specific authorial choice, like metaphor that they use throughout. And you could examine those metaphors. And But it's, but, you know, it's, it's not just that, like, here are three different authorial choices that I can examine. I think I said that in a, previous video that was really designed for like maybe people who have not studied for the exam. So I was like, in an emergency situation, just pick three and you could organize your essay that way and probably get an okay score. Um, but people who are watching this video will probably want more than an okay score. And to get more than an okay score, you know, this maybe should be something that happens to the reader right here. Um, so I read a very, very good example. And like, this first point was like, the author achieves this by creating a sense of uh, suspense, danger, um, some kind of effect that the reader, emotional vulnerability, you know, something that the reader can really feel. And then in the first paragraph that examined like, okay, so how do they do that? So like, um, if the author achieves this by creating a sense of danger, what's that first paragraph about? Of your, of your first body paragraph, the author successfully establishes a sense of danger through use of, first, by using an anecdote to do this. Later, as, as an aspect of the anecdote, there's powerful visual imagery. Um, and then, like, what's going on implicitly? What's, like, what's, what's, what's beyond the literal meaning in that paragraph? And then this, this author talked about atmosphere, repetition, um, implicit comparisons between different things, vocabulary choices, choices in diction. And so like, you know, for this point, there might be three to four specific authorial choices that you could like, that you're, that you're interpreting, that you're like, the meaning comes out of it. I think this is getting a little long. I should probably stop. Uh, let me do this. Let me do do this because I want to give you a chance to actually, I want to try this new experiment. So...
give yourself a post note and copy this out. This is the actual guiding question for this one that I made it up. You know, so this um, extract right here is probably a little bit short, a little bit short maybe, and maybe a little bit more challenging. But, you know, that's a good way to do it. This is the same guiding question. If you want, you could join the channel. You could join the channel. You could join the channel at the level where I would give you individual feedback on what you do based on this guiding question and this extract. Um, so if you want to do that, you could actually write an essay, write a 600 word essay, and you could send it to me. You can send it to me if you are a genius level member. I'm just experimenting. Maybe some people want that. It seems like people want that. Um, so if you do, you email me, join, email me, and uh, I'll write you, I'll, I'll create a video that's a half hour of feedback based on whatever you create. You know, so I'll look at the rubric, I'll look at your writing, I'll look at the rubric, look at the writing, give you a score, talk about like where you're at, strengths and weaknesses, things you need to work on, things you might have missed, maybe compare it to my own example. Like, I'll do that if you want me to. If you want to join at that level, that's something you're into. Might help you be a little bit less stressed out. That's what I'm going for. Um, but the next video, in any case, um, I, will, I will start to do that. I will start to um, talk about this extract and, and reading this extract with this guiding question. So if you don't want to do the full practice, you might just read it, annotate it with this guiding question. And we'll see where it comes of that. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you use this. Give me a cup of coffee.